today we're going to paint the Necron Tomb Blade and as you can see I've started off with a white undercoat because I'm going to be applying a fair bit of yellow onto parts of the miniature and initially I'm using Uriel Yellow and next I'm using Chorus Black but I'm not going to try and cover all the black areas what I want to concentrate on at the moment is some of those harder to reach areas because you don't want to later on be trying to put all the highlights into your yellows and trying to get into there with the black and going over the areas you've already painted in yellow so it helps to see which parts are going to be more awkward to get into and if you can to do them then to start off towards giving the golden look for the yellows i'm using seraphine sapia and for the spinal part, I'm only covering the bottom half of these sections. And I'm also picking out areas on the hips and joints. For the best look to see how these, which areas have been painted, it would probably be better at the end to look at the finished miniature in the description. Next I'm applying Agrax Earth Shade into the same areas. Uh, the only difference is the spine area. Instead of covering all of the bottom part of the spine area, I'm just applying a very fine line across the very center. Using Flask It's Yellow to pick out some highlights. And for the spine, I would use this to pick out the lower side of highlights so for example with the joints I'm painting the edges for the lower part of the joints to try and pick out some light and this would also be used on the spine again to pick out the individual vertebras and used on the lower side and now using phalanx yellow and this time we're covering the top side of the vertebras and this will also be used again for the areas where we've got joints and it being applied at the top side of those joints. Agrax earth shade has been used to apply into the cracks and the recesses uh, especially into the joint areas to give some separation and it's also been used for the in between the vertebrae so not over the vertebrae but on the in between of the vertebrae but only on the lower half of the vertebrae this again helps um, to darken that area down and help to give a separation between the separate vertebrae and i also did the same with the upper part of the vertebrae only for the upper part i used seraphine sapia again it's just, just to try and give a separation between the vertebra and the piece in between. Now it's time for us to start working on the black parts of the miniature and initially we started with Corvus Black and this will take a couple of coats and you want to try and avoid applying the black anywhere you don't need because if you do you just want to uh, recover it later on with some white paint before you can start using the colours you're going to use in those areas. Next, I've been using Scaven Blight Dinge, and from some parts, I'm just catching the edges just to make the edges stand out. And as you can see, there are some areas where I'm blocking out the area and giving it a thicker amount of the the Scaven Blight to try and make it look like certain areas the light would catch it and make it look slightly lighter. Mechanica Standard Grey has been used as the last highlight for the black areas and nowhere is going to be blocked out with this colour. This time it's literally just touching up edges um, and this helps again, especially with the areas where it was initially blocked out. This helps to make those areas have that highlight. Here you can see that I've painted the blade on the top of the miniature. I use the same colours for this as I have for the other yellow areas only I didn't use any 
Agraxiv shade and there are a few areas where I've applied some Dawn Yellow just to bring out a little bit of extra light. This is primarily been on places like hands or feet which as you can see that they are now painted and this is just because these areas are slightly more on the outside so they would get a bit more light than the parts in the center now as i said before for these areas if you've accidentally gone over the areas with black you'll want to go over the areas with some white paint first to get rid of the black and then Loft Warm Blue has been thinned down roughly one part blue to two parts Lamia Medium. And this gives it a slightly more opaque look for covering all of the blue areas. For the orb here, and there's a couple of, well, there's actually three buttons on the center of the miniature. They were first painted with Flash Kitsch Yellow. And then afterwards, Ferragon Orange was mixed with a 50-50 mix on, with the Lamia Medium and was applied into these areas. I applied two coats like this and the reason why I thinned the paint down and applied it twice as opposed to only painting it once with, without using the medium is by thinning it down it's going to encourage it to want to stick to other contact areas so in effect the orange is going to be slightly more prominent near the black parts where are connecting the orb in place and for the symbol in the center of the circle and the, the pieces either side of the miniature and also onto his chest plate night haunt gloom was applied into these areas last part for the exhaust on the miniature I used Exorus purple initially and when that was dry I heavily watered down a bright pink and applied that into the area so the pink because it's heavily watered will naturally want to sink into the recesses and that gives it a nice alien look for the exhaust so to get a better look remember to look at the finished miniature in the description if you like the video, remember to subscribe, click the notification bell and also share the video with your friends.